All right, welcome to part two of the Frankenstein drivetrain build here. Uh, if you missed part one, that's where I adapted this Jaguar Straight 6 to a flathead Ford V8 uh, flywheel, clutch, and bell housing assembly uh, right here with this custom adapter plate. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I then went from the Ford components to the Chevy T5 transmission. This part is actually simpler than the first one because lots of people like to adapt Chevy T5s to their flathead V8s. Uh, and because of that, I could just buy like off-the-shelf um, adapter parts, mostly for the actual clutch setup inside of here um, to make sure that like the throw-out bearings and pilot bearings and stuff like that uh, were the correct size. So that made it definitely a lot easier. And that's the kind of thing you should keep in mind too if you're trying to do something similar to this is like aftermarket availabilities for um, things like that if it's a conversion that other people have already done in the past. If I wanted to, I could have just bought a actual aftermarket adapter to go straight from this bell housing right here to the T5 transmission, um, but that wouldn't be any fun. So I'm making this adapter plate myself, incorporating this, what's called a hogshead adapter, uh, which is also a part that Ford made, uh, which has the clutch linkage built into it. Um, so. In this video, I'm going to be finishing up this whole thing pretty much and getting ready to actually set it into the frame. So I hope you enjoy the video and learn a thing or two along the way. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so what you saw me do just then is I put a new pilot bearing into the flywheel there. That bearing is actually part of the kit that Speedway sells um, to, a, to adapt the flathead V8 to the T5 transmission. So that presses right into the flywheel and the ID of that bearing will fit right into uh, the input shaft of the transmission right here to, just to keep that nice and aligned. And now I know that the bell housing right here is not perfectly centered to the actual um, engine and the crankshaft um, because it doesn't have to be. All that matters is that the transmission and the engine are perfectly centered to one another. And since I'm making custom adapter plates on either side of the bell housing, how I make those is what really determines um, what is centered. So I can actually use the transmission to align itself with this input shaft here. One problem though is that you can see this shaft here has play in it uh, back and forth. So I can't just lower this right down into that bearing right now because the transmission would still be able to shift around a little bit. And even though that's the purpose of having the play in here, I want to get that as straight as I possibly can. So I turned up uh, this piece on the lathe right here. This is just a simple little collar. This slips right on around the splines there and then into this other piece up here. So now that locks it in perfectly centered. Now I can lower the transmission down into that pilot bearing and this will give me a perfect center um, between the crankshaft and the transmission, which is that exactly what I wanted. The next problem though is that I need a way of removing just this upper hogshead adapter and the adapter plate um, connected. Once I lower this down, I can unbolt it from the transmission, I can take this piece off of the bell housing, but there's nothing holding those, these two pieces together. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to super glue it, put a couple lines of super glue in between there, and that will hold it together enough for me to take it all apart, take those two pieces off having to still be connected, turn it upside down over onto my mill, and then I can just drill the holes. I'll use these exact holes right here to align it, and I'll just drill and tap right into the aluminum. And I'll also put a couple um, alignment pins in there as well. I'll drill the holes for that. So I'm going to wipe this down with some acetone, lower it down, <laughs> super glue it, and then take it all apart and back to the mill. So.
All right, so that's pretty much the, the finished drivetrain here now. There's still a couple little things that I still have to do from the last video, like I still need to uh, mount the starter right up here. I need to put in a little spring for the, the throw out bearing here. It has a little spring that just kind of like um, keeps it, keeps tension off of it. But other than that, that's pretty much um, the drivetrain there. I think it's really cool to see um, the connection of the Jaguar to Ford to Chevy parts here and have it all still work out. But I hope you guys learned some stuff from this two-part series. I hope it was it was interesting to watch. And now I can finally start putting the drivetrain into uh, my actual car that I'm building this for. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.